In order to solve part A, we're going to need to use these two formulas right here. The first being the de Broglie wavelength formula, and the second is the classical kinetic energy formula. The reason we're using the classical kinetic energy formula is because we are going to assume that the electron has non-relativistic effects. So that just means the electron is not traveling fast enough for relativity to play a factor in our calculations. The next thing I'm going to do is solve for the velocity in the de Broglie wavelength formula. Afterwards, I'm going to substitute in that velocity into the kinetic energy formula, and this will simplify down to the kinetic energy is equal to one half times Planck's constant squared divided by the wavelength squared times the mass. Next, we'll go ahead and plug in the values for these variables. And a quick note right here, this value right here, 1 times 10 to the negative 11th meters, that is our wavelength. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing from the question, but this is the wavelength that we're going to use for this, for the lambda variable. This will give us a kinetic energy of 2.41 times 10 to the negative 15th joules. However, we need to use the, we need to use the units of electron volts. And the conversion factor for that is for every one electron volt, there are 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. So once we convert, we'll get that the kinetic energy is equal to 15,060 electron volts, or you can write that as 15.1 kilo electron volts. So part B is asking for the minimum photon energy, and we know that the energy of a photon is simply Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the wavelength. Now we'll go ahead and substitute in our values for the variables, and we'll get the energy to be 1.99 times 10 to the negative 14th joules. Once again, we'll need to convert that to electron volts, and we'll get an answer of 124,238 electron volts, or we can write that as 1.2 times 10 to the second power kilo electron volts.